Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today. Now originally today I was going to have a different video up, um, but for some very strange reason I've encountered a very kind of strange bug. So I was in a division with two other players and then suddenly we came out of battle and the division disappeared. We no longer had the division menu or anything like that, but we're still in division together. <laughs> and so we tried everything. We like restarted, uh, re-logged, all that stuff. And now we found that like even when the client is closed and we're not logged in, it still shows us as being online. So there's something like really wrong right now. Um, we've sent in a support ticket and hopefully it gets resolved, but it's prevented me from being able to use training rooms and all that stuff. So I guess I'm gonna have to push that video back a little bit more. Maybe mm, sometime, maybe this weekend, hopefully they can fix the issue. So instead, I'll just show you some random gameplay that I've had, uh, one of them being a rank battle. Now, this is still sort of in the lower ranks. This is like rank 12. Um, and I do have to say, I really, really like the Zal. Now, I started playing ranked, playing battleships and things like that. But for some reason, I just decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to try the Zal, see how it is. And so far, I like it. The Zal is a very interesting combination, right? You've got an interesting combination of kiting away ability. You have pretty trollish armor. Your guns are really good. A combination of your HE being really good and your AP being pretty darn good as well. Your arcs are not crazy and you're pretty damn stealthy as a cruiser. So, so far the way I've been playing the ship is using the stealth, getting into positions, broadsides of enemy cruisers, and then unleashing my AP on them. In this case, you'll see I'm going to kind of get onto a reasonable shooting position against the enemy Hindenburg, although the Hindenburg is actually not my priority target as a Zal. My first targets are usually enemy destroyers, and typically what I do is I follow, say, maybe a couple kilometers behind my own destroyers. And then what would happen is that when my destroyer detects an enemy destroyer, I just unload HE at them. Typically speaking, if you aim your salvo right and the enemy destroyer gets caught a little bit off guard by your presence, you can easily salvo them for like eight, 9,000 damage, which for a destroyer is quite significant. In this particular case, on my team, I've got a Harugamo. Uh, <laughs> it's not the stealthiest destroyer out there, um, so I momentarily turned my attention over to the cruiser on the other side. but. Eventually, the Harugamo does get into a fight with an enemy gearing. Gearing does pop smoke, so that does allow him to disappear. But there's enough people shooting at him, including the Harugamo, that that gearing isn't really going to live much longer. And there he goes down. So with the gearing out of the way, enemy team has one Shimakaze left. And they've got a couple more cruisers and only one GK. And the GK is over there to the left. And... In my present position, that means on this side, where my guns are, there is no enemy battleship to threaten me here, just cruisers. Which is perfect, because I'm just going to cut up right around here, because I'm going to have pretty good cover from that GK. And I'm going to come over here and engage these cruisers, and these poor cruisers just... Maybe they're not aware of me being here anymore, um, I don't know what they were thinking, but... Yeah, no, you never want to be in that kind of position against the Zhao. Zao will hurt you really, really quickly. That Des Moines, just poor guy, came out broadside and blap blap, two salvos, and he's down to just basically nothing. I'm gonna get one more AP salvo off just because it was reloading, but as soon as that's done, I'm gonna transition over to HE. At the same time that this is happening, I'm also mindful that this enemy GK probably is gonna be coming out as well. First of all, he's alone and he's not really in a great spot. And second, here I am in the middle, destroying his cruisers. Might want to come out here and try to help his team out. So, I just throw a nice wall of torpedoes into that slot where he's going to come out. Alright, DM has a fire on him. Pretty low, I'm pretty sure my team is going to finish him off. Transition over to the Zhao. Zhao's attention is, I don't know what the Zhao's attention is on. Uh, I think it might be on the Harugamo, but poor Zhao came out again, broadside. And, yow. That hurt. That first salvo was able to take off like 30,000 HP off of him. That second forward turret salvo was terrible. But with my rear guns, I am going to finish him off right there. Okay, so very, very quick battle. This rank battle only lasts, in terms of the actual battle part, only lasts something like five minutes. <laughs> it's a pretty fast battle. 
Okay, so the GK came out, did eat that torpedo. So that allows me to, of course, go load up the HE. Right? I did mention trollish armor, right? See that? <laughs> I was able to get that off of my belt. And, of course, now I'm going to go for fires. I have another set of torpedoes waiting as well, so I'm going to unleash those. And hopefully the GK is going to run into that as well. Now, obviously, I don't want to get into a direct head-to-head -head confrontation with a battleship. That is still not a good idea when you're a cruiser. So, of course, this little island here, I am immediately going to get behind it and take some cover. I am also aware that there is a Shimakaze in that smoke over there. So, once this GK goes down, and it should be pretty fast, just ate another torpedo, it's now going to flood out, and that GK is not going to last very long. Once this GK goes down, there's only one Zhao on the enemy team and one remaining Shima, which I know where the Shima is. As you'll notice, I have DFAA and not Hydroacoustic, so I am trying to get into proxy spotting range. There's the Shima. First salvo, and you'll notice there's 11,000 damage. Now, of course, the Shima does get torpedoes off. I'm just going maximum speeds just to prolong my life because I need to get off the second salvo and finish the Shima off. There you go. There's a salvo and I go down as well, but totally worth it. Very, very short rank battle, uh, 169k damage. Yeah, <laughs> there's my high caliber, 8,155 uh, experience, 613,000 credits, 11 Citadel hits, and that was pretty much done, right? Um, base experience, 2,552. So yeah, um, lower rank battles. <laughs> they can still be fun. They can be frustrating as well, but they definitely can have their fun moments as well. But definitely for me right now, Zhao is my preferred rank ship. I'm not really enjoying the battleships in rank right now. It's just, I don't know, I, I like the flexibility of having cruisers. Okay, so another battle. I actually managed to grind and get my Hindenburg. And I do have to say, it is a very, very strong ship right now. The quarter pen for the 203 millimeter guns, allowing it to penetrate 50 millimeters of armor is incredible. <laughs> the number of guns, the pretty darn good armor, the nice range, the nice ballistics of the Hindenburg. This ship is a very, very powerful ship. But I actually find Hindenburg really boring. <laughs> I actually found most of the German cruiser line really, really sleep inducing play the rune and it felt like with the rune most of the time you were spending time just at that you know 15 16 17 kilometer maybe a little bit more range and you just sit there and you just sling a lot of he at people and when people are closer and they're broadside then you sling some ap at them just not the most exciting ship <laughs> i find zao to be far more exciting um, after the buff, especially now, Zhao has 12 kilometer torpedoes. Now, I find Zhao a very exciting ship to play. You're, you're much closer to the action, especially if you, know, you kind of play the way I do, which is being pretty close to your destroyers, being sort of their first support for those destroyers. Zhao's very exciting. Hindi is uh, pretty sleep inducing. <laughs> Still a pretty good battle, as you'll see in this one, but yeah. Okay, so first things first. There's an enemy Alabama at 18 kilometers, and this is what you do with Hindenburg. You stay at this kind of-ish range, and you start slinging HE. And of course, with your penetration, and the number of shells, and the sheer number of shells you're going to sling, you do get sufficient numbers of fires, and you get pretty darn good damage. As for the battle in itself, I'm basically going to end up playing a bit of a holding role, because if you actually take a look at the map right now, I'm going to be pretty much the only ship that is going to be north, um, but the enemy team, there's quite a few. There's this Alabama over there, there's a GK, there's another ship that's in the cap for sure that I can't spot yet, a destroyer, and there looks like to be another battleship there, I think it's the Turpets. So I'm going to have quite a bit of company up north, while my team is mostly right now in the B cap area, but you'll see by their direction of travel, most of them are going south. So my job really is going to be try to hold this area in a bit of a stalling action as long as possible. For this particular purpose, Hindenburg is not a bad ship. She's got those pretty darn good ballistics, right? Her armor is not exactly pathetic. She doesn't usually get outright deleted by stuff, you know, and 
just an overall good ship. She's not like super sluggish, right? Pretty agile. You can spend quite a bit of time kiting away. It's also kind of frustrating to push on the Hindenburg, a ship with very good fire chance, pretty darn good rate of fire, and just frustrating. And of course, she can pen you sort of like everywhere. <laughs> with her HE penetration, she really has the capacity to do that. And so that's basically what I will be doing for the first while of this battle, while I watch my team go south, retake that cap in the southern area, sort of hold back the enemy team in the middle area, and that's what I do. Like I did say earlier, Hindenburg is a little bit on the sleep-inducing side. <laughs> I, fa I found that my games with the German cruisers have generally been pretty relaxing. It's kind of like taking a stroll in the park kind of thing, you know? Um, just very easy ships to play. Anyways, uh, there was another very interesting thing. I was reading the forums, the World of Warships forums, and somebody was asking, I was like, how come CCs don't get focused very much? <laughs> oh boy. Um, <laughs> first things first, CCs get focused a lot, especially when we're testing like new ships or in some battles when you have that name recognition. I've been focused sometimes so insanely hard that it's just like, guys, come on. <laughs> Like, cut me some slack. Like, let me go. But the first things first, yeah, you know, you're not going to avoid the focus when you're a CC. But sometimes you see the video and you'll be like, you guys don't get shot at as much as maybe I do. And I do want to sort of offer a little bit of, yeah, I guess, an answer, maybe offer some tips. Typically speaking, what you want to do, if you don't want people to shoot at you, right, is one, consider your angling. People love shooting broadside targets. So one, definitely consider that, right? Are you nicely angled? Are you going full broadside? Because if you're going full broadside, people are going to smack you. Second, be very, very aware of overmatch. Be aware of what ships you can bounce. Be aware of what ships you can't bounce, right? So for example, if you're playing uh, a Des Moines, for example, and you have 27 millimeter armor on the bow, you know you can auto bounce. 380 millimeter guns. So if you're up against the Bismarck, you know exactly what to do. You just angle nicely, and the Bismarck is going to get frustrated with you and go shoot someone else because every salvo that Bismarck puts on you is not going to go anywhere. The same would be true if you're playing uh, a Des Moines up against the Rish, or, you know, it's just not a fun target to shoot at. Then, of course, you have a situation like this Des Moines has gotten himself into, and take a look at what's in front of this Des Moines. Grosser Curve first. Grosser Curve first guns can overmatch Des Moines everywhere. So this DM sitting out here in the open, stationary, made himself a really easy target. So that's why the first salvo that GK fired was actually at that DM. But that GK second salvo is at me. And the reason is because I did go broadside. But take a look at my situation. If I go broadside, and I'm able to turn away, then I'll be safe from any further fire. If I just kept going, I would have run into that island, presented a nice flat broadside, and probably have been deleted. The reason I was confident in making this particular maneuver is because I'm in a Hindenburg. Hindenburg has a turtle back armor, which at close ranges is actually not that easy to get citadels. It's doable, but it's actually not that easy. It does require the shells to actually come in at a bit of an angle. At that range, with GK's guns, the velocity on those shells, they tend to be a little bit flat. That coupled with GK's not the world's best accuracy, I was like, you know what, I'm pretty sure I can get away with that. And I do want to get out of there because I definitely don't want to sit there at full broadside and get deleted by the GK and then that other turpits that's following right behind him. So I guess that would be like tip number three is really do know the capabilities of your ships. What are they capable of? What are they not capable of, right? What fire they can resist? What fire can they not resist? Right? All these things will allow you to decide where you should be staying and where you should be getting the hell out of there. Which then, of course, leads to the next tip as well, which is don't be afraid to turn around and get the hell out of there. By turning tail and running away sometimes, you do also pull distance. By pulling distance, you become less enticing of a target. People do psychologically like to shoot things that are generally a bit closer to them. So that's another thing you could do, right? Yes, there's the old adage, don't show broadside, you're going to get paddled, you're going to get deleted. Still 
true, right? It's still true, especially against certain ships. And again, you have to be wary about what ships you're giving broadside to and of course, which ship you yourself are in. Cruisers, you gotta be a lot more careful. You wanna probably use your concealment and all that kind of thing. But if you're in a battleship, you know what? In the game that we have today, a lot of battleship citadels are far closer to the waterline. They're a lot more difficult to hit. So if you're in a battleship and you see that there's an entire enemy fleet coming towards you and you have no support and you know and you do have to look at the minimap and you don't have support, well don't keep charging in there. That's a very good time to say, nope, I uh, do not want this. Turn the hell around and go away. However, big capital bold letters warning. <laughs> Don't do this just because, oh, I don't want to get shot at, right? My paint's going to get scratched. No, do it because you know things are going to go badly for you, right? Because you're outnumbered and the enemy team has superior ships even. And, you know, in a situation, for example, at like tier 6, 7, 8, maybe your guns won't overmatch them, but their guns are going to overmatch you and they have more numbers than you. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to run the hell away and start kiting, right? But if your team has an overwhelming advantage, don't just be like, oh, for the sake of me not getting shot at, let me run away. Well, then you're not really much help to your team who is maybe trying to push that flank. A lot of these things, when it comes to like tips and advice, you do have to consider the context, shall we say. It's very important, right? It's very, very, very important. As you can tell, I did not want to be at a close range to that miniature because I also know that there's a destroyer there that is keeping me lit. So best choice, don't stick around. Pull distance because by pulling distance, miniature is going to struggle to hit because at this kind of range, look at the arc of those minnow shells, right? Not not easy for a minnow to hit me at this kind of range. Uh, easier for me to, to, to have the return fire to hit him back, but not easy for him to hit me. Also, and I guess this is still part of those tips, don't forget to keep maneuvering as well. Don't always be in a straight line. Do kind of wiggle from time to time, right? Sometimes I will, of course, try to go in a straight line. Why? Because I want to try to pull distance as quickly as possible. So sometimes I will do that, but even then, I will generally go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Nothing major. Why? Because sometimes you don't want to lose too much speed while you're doing it. And finally, the, I guess, last tip of the day, this should be number five, when your team does come to back you up or when you are regrouped with your team, don't keep running away. <laughs> there's a very there's a very interesting thing you see with players in battles is that like they'll keep running and running and running and running and they'll just keep running forever. There's also a time to re-engage in a battle. So in this case with my teammates here, that minnow is going to back off because that minnow is going to get deleted because these other ships are closer to him, right? I'm further away. So as soon as I see that my team is over here and they're able to support me, I immediately turn right back around. Why? Because my firepower is still valuable to them. And that's something that you really have to remember. Yes, at times kiting away very useful, but you also have to re-engage. Don't always just keep running all the way to the other side of the map because then you haven't really done anything. I've definitely had battles where I've seen my team do those kinds of things where it's like, you know, if you guys had just kind of held that area and just kited and still kept fighting, it would have been okay. But instead, you just did like a full-blown retreat and then, well, that entire flank collapses. And then we get pincered in and it's the end of the battle, right? So you do have to remember to disengage when necessary, but also re-engage when necessary. As for our battle right now, eh, we're pretty close. We're still pretty close. We're down on ships. Enemy team is, well, there's still quite a few of them, and a lot of them are coming towards the B cap right now, so a small cap advantage is probably going to go away. I'm, of course, going to try to support my team and maybe try to retake the northern cap as well, the A cap that's currently in the enemy team's possession, really because you just want to keep flipping the caps, right? We want to be able to maintain the points to try to get the battle won. So far, not bad. I mean, I've... Uh, 3.16 million potential damage. A lot of that's been, of course, uh, contributed by that glorious Minotaur over there who uh, really, really enjoyed shooting me. 
And as for damage, I'm sitting on about 144,000 damage. There's going to be a bit more to be had. In fact, in this particular battle, you'll see something very interesting that happens later on, which is also kind of scary considering how much damage we're actually going to do. Oh, right. One other thing to point out, and this is another thing I sort of forgot to mention. In World of Warships, keep fighting to the bitter, bitter, bitter end, right? Don't give up. Even if hell, if even if you're on low HP, don't be discouraged to fight, right? Yes, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful. Yes, you're probably going to have to seek concealment and cover, island cover ideally, something hard that, you know, you won't take a lot of return fire. But keep on fighting. Sometimes you see players that just like, hey, you know, I'm low HP, I'm just not going to fight. I'm just pretty much going to disengage from the battle and keep myself alive. Well, what the hell's the point if you end up losing, right? Keep on fighting. Because as long as your guns are still in this fight, as long as you keep you know, sort of doing damage to the enemy team, your chances to win are still going to be there. And hell, like I don't even have a heal anymore. I'm on 7k HP. Really, a battleship looks at me the wrong way, and I likely could die. But I'm using this terrain effectively, and I was shelling that grosser curve for a set of fire, doing some additional damage. GK is not really happy, because you'll if you look at that GK, not super healthy either, right? Battle is a lot closer now. We're on the same number of ships. Uh, that GK is pretty low, and we have a Grozovoy in my division over there who's probably going to take care of him. Enemy Seattle over there. I see that that Seattle is stopped, is broadside, so I did load AP. But that Seattle started moving forward again. All right, so do I have a scout plane? And I'm going to try to have to like get into range. Come on. Come on, Hindenburg. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There we go. Getting closer. Still take my shots, right? You'll see that. Like, I'm still shooting. Continue to do damage, right? Always remember to do that. Okay, so this salvo, I'm not sure that first salvo doesn't look good. And eh, not really. Not really all that great. Second salvo, yeah. <laughs> don't ask. That one just went like, wow. I don't know where the hell I was aiming that shot. Seattle, oh, lost vision, okay, all right, okay, so looking for a new target, shall we say, that GK is not very healthy at all, probably is going to get gunned down, I think, by the Groz, because Grozovoy, Grozovoy against a target with that much HP should be able to just gun that GK down, at least that's what I think is going to happen, can't remember, this battle was... This battle was a few days ago. Was a few days ago. Oh, speaking of which, um, I hope you guys had luck with your tier 10 super containers, and I hope you've gotten some good things. Me, I will show you the results of my crate openings uh, right after this battle and the results screen. I did actually manage to capture the footage. My drops were, well, the usual sad <laughs> drops. I, I, I have those kind of sad super container openings um don't want flags here have more flags don't want this have some more oh <laughs> anyways okay so enemy wooster worcester worcester i still cannot do the ship's name every time i say it one way somebody goes like no you say it the other way and i'm like okay i i don't know anymore <laughs> I, I really don't um but yes again with my hp i do have to be careful right if I was shooting that ship <laughs> in that initial position, that Wooster could have really just turned a little bit more, brought all of his guns to bear on me. Instead, I wait until he's in this kind of position where you'll see that he's actually turned around. His guns are pointed the other way. There you go. My salvo goes in it. Hey, look, there is my high caliber. Yay. That means I've taken down a good percentage of the enemy team's HP. Oh, that that Wuster, Wuster, <laughs> just kept coming at that full broadside position. I would have able to hurt him. Okay, but you'll notice that I am stationary, and that's not good, because that's 12 kilometers, and that ship can kill me pretty quickly. So go, gotta go. Gotta be aware of the danger, right? As soon as the guns are towards me, I'm out of there. Ah, 200 HP. <laughs> I only shot, because I also knew I had this island cover. I knew I could get behind this island cover relatively quickly. Oh, and there you go other division mate also had high caliber we had two high calibers in our division if i remember correctly that should mean we took down 60 percent of the entire enemy team's hp 
pretty darn good. Yeah, we, we did manage to do uh, pretty well in this battle. Okay, and so now um, enemy team, well, they're running out of time, and we're definitely ahead on points. The middle capture point is being frozen by our Grozovoy right now. I'm sitting on pretty comfortable damage number as well, although with Hindenburg getting higher is definitely not something that I think is super hard. The ship is very, very strong. At farming damage, that is. It is very, very strong at that. But for me personally, Hindenburg's not really my ship. I just a bit too passive for me. I, I much more prefer Zhao. I know some people probably will play the ship maybe a little bit more actively, but I don't know. I like Zhao. I like the way Zhao plays. She's very she's a lot of things you gotta manage, a lot of things you gotta kinda pay attention to. There we go, time ticks down and we win this battle on points. And here we go, final results screen. I have Dreadnought, Witherer, High Caliber, 184,000 damage. No Citadel, sad chase, very, very sad. Um, 10 fires, base experience was 1,980, but my God, my division made that Montana 2,911. What a game. Anyways, and there, there we go. Let's take a look at the uh, final damage totals and you'll see that in terms of my shell damage, not a reasonable amount of damage from the AP shells, good high explosive damage, very, very good fire damage. Sadly, it is a tier 10 ship, so credit gains, not all that amazing. All right, and so that pretty much does it for the gameplay stuff. Let's take a look at those crates, because really that's what you're all waiting for, right? Crates. <laughs> so here we go. Um, super container number one, flags. Okay. Super container number two. Flags. <laughs> Super container number three. Oh, uh, camo. <laughs> Valentine's Day camo. I have a lot of camo. Don't really need camo. Hey, okay. Some coal. I got 15k coal. Alright. I don't mind coal. Coal, coal, because we have arsenal now. Coal is pretty good. Steel. That's good. Fif you know, well, 1500 steel. That's a good super container. Yes. 14 more days of premium time. I have like a lot, but hey, more never hurt. Ah, more flags. Victor Lima flags are. Uh, uh, oh, okay, hundred detonation flags. I'll take hundred detonation flags because you know what, detonation flags in the game, those are good because then I don't have to go get detonated ten times playing other ships. Score. Actually, that was what made me the happiest. Actually, those dead flags. Okay, free XP, another fifty thousand. I'm sitting at like 1 million, so 50k is nice. Yay, 15k more coal. All right, like that. Um, that's 30k coal already. That's that's sweet. More camo. Oh, and it's Gamescom too, again. I had that already in my other super containers from like before this day. I had Gamescom camo and I was like, ah, Gamescom camo. <laughs> uh, okay, these regular third anniversary. These third anniversary crates are pretty disappointing, right guys? And a thousand doubloons. Okay, I'll take it. And, oh, hold on, one more. And what do I... Oh, Victor Lima again too. And of course I had one more afterwards and scored another 50,000 free experience. Anyways folks, hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again next time.